Summer in Spencer City. The smell of the market, the clanging of Belgo's forge filled the atmosphere. I headed off to Mianka's shop because I had heard he had something for me. When I arrived, I didn't find him. But... Just a book he left for me. Signed by the Queen. Rusty, I have an important diplomatic mission for you. Our alliance with the pigmen has failed. Our production of gold is waning as we have become too dependent on Deep Slate to focus our efforts on gold. To prevent an interdimensional war, we implore you to please settle this dispute with the pigmen. Beyond the dimensional portal and through the fortress, you will find their natural habitat, the Crimson Forest. If we can build them a wheat farm, perhaps it will quell their anger for a moment longer. Please do not let us down. The kingdom depends on you. I took the book, knowing what I had to do. Here I was, back in the place that I hated most. Seeing all of the enemies around me, I rushed for it, passing through, knowing where I must go. The place where all of the pigmen lived. It was the only place. I had on my golden chest a diplomatic armor. I was greeted by a pigman. What are you here, human? Do you bring gold? I come bearing a different gift. I will build you a farm of wheat so that you may have bread. You think food will be enough to appease the chief? You may pass, human. But without gold, your efforts are meaningless. What's going on my crew? This is Rusty and welcome to another episode of Rusty Builds. I hope you guys enjoyed that intro because uh, I, it, it's part of my new plan. Uh, so here we are in the nether uh, beginning our nether build and my plan was uh, to actually make a completely different sort of adventuring episode. Uh, but as I was doing it, I realized exactly what I needed uh, to get some stuff accomplished and so I was really excited to get back over into here and Get started on what I needed to get started on which is basically uh, Creating some architecture for the nether uh, Basically what we're gonna do is something a little bit different than what I've done in the past uh, with roofs and builds and different things so uh, I'm stripping the roof off now and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the roof with end caps on it. So uh, basically the roof will go up like this and there will be these little end pieces that go up all the way. Uh, you guys will see what I mean soon enough. Uh, but I think it's got a really good tone and feel for a build like the nether. Uh, but I wanted to touch base real quick before we get started on sort of what my plans are for this area. Uh, my plans are not to make a build that is based on future events, I mean past events, but to progressively uh, build this world uh, based on events that are happening now. And I thought that maybe that would be something that you guys would be interested in, uh, creating stories, because you guys seem to like the cinematic feel of a lot of the stories that I do. And I thought, what better way uh, to continue that cinematic feel than to actually like progressively make the world. So instead of saying, oh, well, there's a big town here and then just building the town, making a story and making it dynamic and, and giving it, letting it be the reason why we jump from place to place and do different things. And I think that that's kind of the spark that we need. Um, I know Pun Pun does very similar types of uh, stuff, at least on an SMP server. 
uh, where he sort of tells a story throughout it. Uh, so if you are, if you do like this, then definitely go check out his channel. I will have it in the description below. Uh, he's a pretty loyal fan of, of my stuff, so. Uh, but either way, uh, here we are, inspired and ready to go. Uh, so I am going to get to work on at least getting an outline of what I think, maybe in creative, because it might be a little bit easier to troubleshoot than right here. Uh, and then I'll come back to you and show you guys what we're looking at for a build. So be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, this is sort of the start of what I was thinking for this build. Um, oh, by the way, this is the start of this particular build, and I thought it'd be really cool to add some of the coral stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But this is sort of what I have developed. Uh, this is the type of roof style that I was talking about, and this will really work uh, no matter how much, like how tall we build or what we build. Uh, and what's cool about this as well is probably better suited on this side. When we get to this over here, we can still add a lot of the stuff that we uh, talked about in the other um, style that we've been doing. So if we take nether brick slabs and we want to build a... Uh, let's get this like I want it to. There we go. Uh, if we want to build a little shed, uh, we can still do that. And we can still make all sorts of stuff just like we learned in the past build. So as we do different builds and stuff, we'll begin to uh, sort of expand upon everything that we're doing. But we're just wanting to start off with something small and work from there. So this is going to be a seven by seven area indoors, which I think is what we already have, uh, with it sort of locked into the wall a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mine out a bit of blackstone and probably get some warped stuff. We've got a warped forest off in the distance uh, in the nether, uh, and just work on building something along the lines of this. All right, here we are. Oh, magma cube, can't get away from them. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to improve in this method, but so far, loving it. This is way better than what I had come up with before, and I see a lot of potential. Uh, one of the things that we need to sort of uproot and understand a little bit better is how we can actually implement uh, grass textures and different things. Again, I said textures. So just because we have... Uh, all sorts of abilities to have all sorts of things doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go with one thing or the other. Um, certainly, we can go with a regular grass texture, uh, and we can certainly go with... Uh, you screwball. Certainly, we can go with a grass texture like this one. We can go with moss, depending on what we're going with. But we can also go uh, with this texture here. We also can't plant... Uh, the crops that we need to plant here. Uh, we need to get an actual wheat farm going, uh, and I need to get some iron as well. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to do um, in regards to making this place actually sort of habitable, if you want to call it that. But overall, I think the idea that I'm looking for when I'm making this for these guys um, is I want to make them a place where they can uh, end up thriving and, and you know really make this a, a area that you look at and you go, holy crap, I can't believe that there's an actual nether build of this. I don't want to go too lush in, unless we're dealing with some sort of royal something. So at some point, I kind of want to look at what a bastion looks like. And I want to recreate perhaps a bastion to kind of make it be like, oh, this is kind of cool. This is what a bastion is like uh, in uh, if it's like full, you know. But as we sort of build this stuff out, I think what will be fun and interesting is these are gonna these communities are gonna grow because of us, because of where we are and what we are uh, for them. So they just exist 
and they're not really doing much, but we're building stuff for them, and that's what's going to bring peace to the world, is by bringing the communities together uh, by our doing, by our building, by our crafting, and, and helping them to see what they have in common. Alright, I am back in the nether, and I brought a couple things, but I was actually doing some thinking. And there's a couple things that I realized is very bizarre about the nether and the things we find therein. Take for instance, if we take our soul soil and we create a soul lantern, for instance, we need iron to make a soul lantern. And we need coal to make a soul torch. Now none of these things I don't I don't think they're found in the nether to be fair. However, I just wanted to throw it out there that I find that a bit bizarre. We also can't necessarily find raw gold in the nether. So I was simply kind of thinking about a little bit of a issue and how we need to stretch our imagination. Uh, so when we're making soul torches uh, and then converting those into uh, soul lanterns here, uh, I was thinking about how these soul lanterns might be made. Uh, an end rod, yes. So it's made with just popped chorus fruit. That's actually a really easy recipe for us. And we've got both of those materials, so this is absolutely what we can do. We just need to be considerate when you're making your builds to think about these things. What resources do they have in the area? And are those resources something that you can, are, are good, easy to find or not easy? I figured I would bring iron anyways. We need a hoe to start making the farm uh, for these guys. Uh, but I'm gonna get to some interior decorating. Looks like we may not use these soul tan uh, lanterns after all. Uh, now there's no reason why we can't call uh, a iron an import. Uh, it's something that we could certainly do. But I think it'd be cool if we added some of these end rods instead. So let me get to some interior decorating. Kind of excited to show you this. Uh, I got pretty inspired and uh, as you guys can see, uh, we have a little piggy. I don't know if this thing will stay here, but I figured why not at least give it a go and try it out, see if he does. Uh, and if he doesn't, then we can deal with that when we deal with that. These end rods are really giving it some oomph. I think if we make this house longer, uh, that would actually be preferable. Or future houses, I should say, longer. I think that will look a little bit better. It feels a bit tall unnecessarily tall but I want to show you guys inside what I've done And I'm pretty happy with it. One thing that we need to do is get a grindstone in here somewhere uh, with that uh, sort of setup like we've had before. But I did a lot of mushroom decor. Uh, and I used not pine or spruce, but the warped for shelves, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, and then I noticed when we do this roof style, we actually get these extra little pieces here that look super cool, like shelving. Uh, and so that was really exciting as well to be able to, to integrate a little bit of that in there. Uh, but this is supposed to be a bed. Um. Eh. Eh. Not sure. Not sure how I like that. Uh, but I really liked the idea of some growth aspects to this. Uh, and really played around with the idea of this being carpet. Uh, this is where the person would eat. Uh, and then we've got to clear out and make a different storage area, but that is pretty much the first base house. And then we, of course, need to do a little bit of a garden. So 
the whole purpose of me coming out here for these guys was the idea that they need to make themselves a bit of a farm. So we have a little bit of work to do on the side here. Uh, I think I have more dirt than this. Yes, I do. Okay, cool. And then let's get yes, this pickaxe and grab a few pieces of dirt here. I actually have a silk shovel that I don't think is with us. But we're going to clear a little spot over here. And this will be the garden portion. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've created a couple uh, of these crimson fences. Kind of fit the decor. And crap. Oh, got lucky on where that thing is trying to go. Let's just get rid of that real quick. Uh, where is the demon? This is one of the problems that we face building in the nether is a lot of times you can run into issues as you build. Uh, but no matter. Alright, so that that works well. And then we've got a dark oak fence gate for now. To get in here. There we go. Everybody made a little bit happier. Uh, close that off and then walk over here to do sort of a final look at how things look. So we've got the little piggy on this side and the garden on the other. And dang, if this does not feel uh, pretty interesting and, and makes me feel pretty happy. I now we don't know if he's going to be here when we come back. Uh, so this might be the one and only time that you see, uh, we'll call him Wilbur. Uh, if I name tag him, probably can get there. But, uh, yeah, now look at this. This feels pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, especially when we uh, grow some more of the area around it. Um, I think that will be pretty nice. And I, I think that'll be a wrap for today, guys. I hope you guys are excited and inspired. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be doing, if you if it hasn't been made clear already, is creating more of a narrative. You guys really like the cinematic stuff and the story arcs and different things, so I want to keep going with that. So at any point in time, uh, we could get pulled away by one thing or another, but right now uh, we are trying to save the kingdom of Kisha uh, by creating this um, farm. And so we, in the next episode, are going to go talk in the Crimson Forest with the tribal leader uh, and ask him to come over and check this place out and tell us what he thinks. Uh, so in the meantime, off camera I might do some work somewhere doing something, uh, but that will remain a secret. Tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be doing some live streaming. Uh, I don't think we're gonna live stream in the nether build, so if you are looking for that, don't worry. <laughs> um, we are going to do some live streaming uh, either over by the base or by uh, Spencer City. Uh, so, But I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to leave a like on it for me. helps me out a lot. It lets me know if this is something you are enjoying or you want to see something else. And uh, leave me some feedback in the comment section. Do you like this style? Do you not like this style? How do you feel? And uh, if you really enjoyed this and want to see more uh, videos like this, then consider hitting that subscribe button if you feel I've earned it. But until next time, guys, happy mining and crafting. <laughs>